This video is a response to our response, so there's some history here. Pertinent links are in the description below, but I'll try to keep things understandable within the context of this video in case you don't want to watch a bunch of videos. A while ago, the Thinking Atheist asked me and several others, including Aaron Ra, DPR Jones, Evidence, Healthy Attic, Lacey Green, Matt Dillahunty, Thunderfoot, and Zomgitz Chris to participate in a collab video about the afterlife. He asked us several questions about the universe, life, and meaning. <clears throat> he took our answers and edited them together into what I feel is a very good video. Recently, around a half dozen theists have gotten together and made a collab response video in which they try to emulate the tone of the Thinking Atheist's video. <clears throat> Neither their contents nor their presentation was successful. According to their comments, they are operating under the very mistaken assumption that the Thinking Atheist is ignoring them because he cannot answer their points, when in actuality they shouldn't even be assuming that he saw the video in the first place. Like me, the Thinking Atheist runs a large controversial channel in the 100,000 sub range that gets thousands of comments as multiple conversations occur simultaneously across scores of our videos. You think we can keep up with that? Coupled with the fact that we don't spend every waking moment on YouTube, it's highly foolish of you to declare victory because your video has gone unanswered. Even if your video has been watched by the Thinking Atheist, he very well might not have even found it worthy of a response. Normally, I wouldn't respond to it either, but I think there should be some answers to it out there in the ether, simply because several theist channels are involved, and some of you foolishly believe that a lack of a response equates to a concession, when in actuality it just means you're not worthwhile. In order to prove that, I will answer the points made in your video, but only to demonstrate that there are indeed answers to them. And next time you don't get a response, perhaps you should instead try a better argument. <clears throat> so let's begin. The first presenter in the video asks, why do we constantly ask, is this all there is? Do we? We don't constantly ask ourselves that. Most of us busy ourselves with the mundane facts of everyday living. Sometimes we stop and contemplate the big picture. Sure. So what? Human beings are very intelligent creatures. We're naturally curious about the unknown. Curious about unexplored territory. We explored our entire planet and we know that there are countless other worlds out there. We can see the shadows of them little more. In an HD world, that's very frustrating. Human beings are always coming up with fantasies to fill in the unknown. Some are whimsical, while others are religiously believed. Just because you prefer a particular fantasy over all the others, that doesn't make it true, not even close. In fact, your preferred fantasy has had an abysmal track record historically when attempting to explain certain phenomena as being supernatural, only to find out later that there, was a, that there was a natural explanation all along. And that's the way it's always been when verification was possible. So, per so perhaps it's also safe to assume the same when verification isn't possible. They go on to ask, if this is it, and all there ever has been, meaning no afterlife, then why bother asking the question? <clears throat> For the same reason we ask any question, because we don't have that particular bit of knowledge. What an odd line of reasoning, that because you can ask a question, it supports your worldview? Do you believe in reincarnation? Why not? People have asked the question, have they lived past lives? According to you, if it isn't true that they did indeed live past lives, then they shouldn't bother asking the question. Furthermore, I don't like you describing life as merely 
this isn't it and all there ever has been? A whole universe is out there and it's worth exploring. What's more, the whole world is out there for each and every one of us. Sure, we can look at a map of the Grand Canyon or a video of it, but that's not the same as going there. There's billions of people and you know but a minuscule fraction of them. So there is more out there and it's the best kind of more. It's the more that's real, that we can actually find. There doesn't need to be some other type of more to long for. We have enough more as it is. If you don't see that, then I think your life is probably seriously lacking some of that more. They ask, is there more to life? than just this world, and exclaim that the mere existence of these questions is evidence of something. These questions are common, seemingly innate, because of our intelligence. We're one of the few species on this planet that is cognizant of our ultimate fate, that our lives are finite, that we will die. I believe that religion is a natural coping mechanism, allowing people to function. It's necessary for some, but not for others. It takes a certain level of maturity and bravery to accept the finality of death. Just asking that question though, is there more to life than just this life? Doesn't mean that the answer is yes. The ability to ask a question certainly doesn't necessarily imply the answer. Then they give a C.S. Lewis quote, atheism turns out to be too simple if the universe has no meaning, then we should ha never have found out that it has no meaning. C.S. Lewis is one of the most overrated Christian popularizers of all time. If human beings are creatures that find meaning in things, because we often create meaning in things, then we're naturally going to extrapolate and anthropomorphize. It's not complicated. It's simple. The Christians who made this video will tell you that God is simplicity, that Occam's razor slices for their side, and then they'll turn around and quote that atheism is too simple. They wonder why we would say that we're insignificant compared to the cosmos. They say that the assumption here seems to be that size determines value. Wrong. Bad assumption. What makes it even worse is that you didn't even have to assume. I personally explained it in the video. What gives something value is rarity versus abundance and being finite versus being everlasting. And of course, even that is relative. Pay attention next time. Then, as if that isn't bad enough, they try to correct my beach analogy in which I describe one grain of sand as being unnecessary to the nature of the beach. And their correction entails the point I actually spell out after the analogy. The comprehension levels here are astoundingly bad. They describe it as being any special potentiality that will make a difference to the beach as a whole rather than the small size of the sand. That was exactly my point. I said when my analogy was over, so too would the universe continue in its ways even if the human race weren't here to witness it. What did you think I meant? I said nothing about size. If you disagree with that statement, then please describe the physics of how, if the human race went extinct tomorrow, how the Earth or the galaxy would suddenly stop spinning. What is it about the lack of human beings that would cause the stars to suddenly stop burning, as they had for the billions of years before our existence? I'm merely extrapolating here the universe continued before us, and I have no reason to believe it won't continue after us. That's what I'm saying here. 
Then they continue with the abysmal size determines value misunderstanding, which incidentally is quite a simplistic interpretation of the video, an interpretation made by many of these very same theists who enjoy referring to us as fundy atheists, usually because they think we hold to a creationist interpretation of the Bible, failing to realize that we're not interpreting, we're responding. Well, your interpretation of our video is very fundy-like, very simple-minded and literal, taking the analogies too literally, even after I hold your hand and walk you through their meaning. Humanity as a whole is analogous to a grain of sand. If we're not unique in the universe, and I strongly believe we're not, there's every indication that there's an abundance of life in the universe. And as I said before, our finite nature and our relationships give us value to each other. But not to the universe as a whole, which will keep on keeping on even without us. Next comes another misunderstanding. When I talk about the universe, I'm including life. Life is a part of the universe and humanity is a part of life. I don't see life as separate like you do. Life is composed of the same things we find in the universe. I see humanity as being a tiny fraction of the life that's out there and even here on Earth. So you don't seem to realize that I'm talking about humanity, not life in general. That is not to say that humanity isn't special. It is to say that humanity isn't so special that everything else would cease to exist if not for us. That is to say that everything in existence wasn't put there because of us, for our benefit and our benefit alone. That is to say that the universe was not created for humanity. And I feel very upset that I have to hold your hands and walk you through this, lest you continue to mislead people. Then they talk about how there will actually be less to do in heaven. That you can't be brave, sad, etc. as only this life will allow. Well, that's great. Not only will we exist for eternity, but there will be less to do. Terrific. Then they actually talk about atheists creating a psychological crutch that death is the end, that there is nobody besides myself to be accountable to, <laughs> that I will not be judged, that nobody has the right to judge the way I live my life other than myself. And they say these things must be a huge comfort to us. Wow, how humongously stupid. I've seen death. It's not a comfort to me. I've seen people I love die. It's not comforting. I'm not only accountable to myself. I know that. I'm accountable to other people who are far more real than some nebulous, invisible deity who creates universes and then concerns himself with land rights and sexual practices. And yes, I am accountable to myself too. I can be harder on myself than anyone else. And I know why some of you wouldn't understand that, because I know some of you have very little discipline. And why not refrain from judging the way people live unless they're actively harming others? What's your reason behind that? You don't give a reason. Then, they talk about judgment as being the motivating factor for Christians for living well in the here and now. That their desire to do good sprouts from the desire to impress and thank God rather than out of fear of God. How would you feel about being helped by someone like that who admits that they're helping you not because they give a fuck about you but because they want to impress someone else? Now, how would you feel if I helped you out of the desire to see your suffering cease? Because I can empathize with you and genuinely want to help you for your sake. 
the help may be appreciated either way. But think of it in human terms. Without God, which offer of help seems more sincere? Allow me to illustrate the point. You're very hungry, living on the street. I bring you some food out of the kindness of my heart, with nobody to see it except each other. Now this other guy comes along and presents you with a $5 bill because he wants to impress his girlfriend on his arm. Both of our helpful actions may be appreciated, but which seems more sincere? Then they say, if this life is all there is, then why care about anything? <laughs> because this life is all there is. That's why the answer is in your question. Enough with the cliches. Frivolity or criminal behavior brings about a life of hardship. I don't want that. I want peace and harmony. They go on to say that in 70 or 80 years, your life will end and nothing you've done will matter. Excuse me? The things we do affect everyone. We touch each other's lives and set events into motion like dominoes in ways you can't even begin to fathom. My life will echo throughout generations. You people just got through talking about impressing God without comprehending why we would want to impress humanity. You say that it shouldn't matter to us because in the end, Everyone will just die anyway? In the end are the key words. Haven't you ever even heard the saying that it's not the destination that matters, it's the journey? I'm astounded that I have to explain this to you. Then they go on about being a famous and influential person and how limited their fame becomes as time goes on. How unnecessary. You can be an average Joe and have an amazingly unforeseen effect on the world. Like I said, domino effect. You may never be recognized for it, but rest assured the world will ultimately end up a different place than if you had never existed. Ultimately though, with these last couple arguments, you've shown your true colors. You care only about recognition, quite telling and shallow. Then they toss out another cliche about how atheists are less fulfilled than Christians. Bullshit! Anyone who knows any more than five atheists and five Christians knows that's bullshit. Hell, most of the atheists I know were Christians. If they were so fulfilled, then what happened? I've seen some fucked up Christians and vice versa. The door swings both ways. In the end, people are people. And what you believe about God rarely significantly changes you. They talk about more shit about the reason mankind is always searching is because of God in heaven. More bullshit. Nearly half the world was unexplored when almost everyone believed in God in heaven. Didn't just believe, but it was more like a fact of life. Of course there's a God in a heaven. But that didn't stop them from exploring. They kept searching, not because they were looking for God, but because they wanted to find something real. They had an insatiable thirst for knowledge. That is the nature of our species. Beavers build dams, geese migrate, bears hibernate, humans are curious. No need to invoke your favorite flavor of God to explain any of those things. Then. They say that if the material universe is evil, unjust, and unpleasant, and if we are just part of the material universe, then we should feel right at home in it. Why? Substantiate that claim. Notice how they assume most people are evil, unjust, and unpleasant? It's no wonder Christianity falters when society thrives, and vice versa. And are you saying that material cannot take on different patterns? It's like you're equating fire to ice. Furthermore, I thought that we were at home in the universe, according to you. Hasn't it been you theists who have said that our universe had to be so finely tuned for us? So which is it? Also, 
I never heard an atheist describe the universe as evil, unjust, and unpleasant. The universe isn't sentient. It's indifferent. It is some human beings who can be evil, unjust, and unpleasant. Yes, fortunately, not all of us are the same. So of course a great many of us are not going to be right with this. Then you actually go on about fine-tuning, thereby conflicting with your previous point, saying things like, life can only arise under conditions X, Y, and Z. You don't know that. You're saying that this is the way it happened, so this is the only way it can be. It's simply the only way you know of, and you're being extremely presumptuous. You don't even know if the matter to expansion ratio is unique or common. As it stands, if the universe keeps going the way it is, it won't be able to support life. Besides all this, you don't even know what the universe entails. For the longest time, most people thought that the universe was just our planet and what they could see in the sky. Up until the 1920s, less than a century ago, most people thought that the entire universe was just the Milky Way galaxy. And now here you are, supreme in your confidence, stating that the universe was made in such a way so that we could exist. Trust me, you don't even know what the universe is. In fact, don't trust me, trust history. <laughs>